In the 20th Congressional District, Republican Congressman Joseph Diagardi, who won his seat in Westchester two years ago, is being challenged by a former Congresswoman, Bella Abzug, trying for a political comeback. Welcome to both of you. Uh, let's start out by uh, talking about the summit meeting in uh, Reykjavik and President Reagan's, uh, Reykjavik's, rather, and President Reagan's decision not to give up uh, on the Strategic Defense Initiative, so-called Star Wars. Uh, since you are going to be sitting, if you get elected, Ms. Abzug, and you will be sitting in the future, uh, Congressman Diagardi, if you're successful in being re-elected, on matters that involve the foreign policy of the United States, uh, what's your reaction uh, to what happened there, Congressman? Well, <clears throat> I supported the president's uh, uh, policies. Uh, I have supported his policies on the Strategic Defense Initiative. And frankly, while I was uh, disappointed, as was the American public, uh, I think that uh, we were proud that the president stood firm. Uh, it was the strength that President Reagan brought to this country that uh, brought the uh, Soviets to the talking table. Who would have thought three years ago that we would have had one or two summits and maybe now looking for a, uh, a third. Uh, I, d I see this as uh, a cause for optimism. We've made some breakthroughs, uh, but when we're talking about a defense initiative, which is what that is, what's the problem? Uh, with the Soviets, we have a history of uh, not being able to trust them. Look at what they've done with the Helsinki Accords. Basic human rights, the Jews in the Soviet Union. Uh, how can we make an agreement that we can't in some way uh, have an insurance policy for. And I see the SDI as our insurance policy. And it's a defense program. Ms. Abzik? I think uh, I'm very disappointed in both President Reagan and uh, Secretary General uh, Gorbachev. Um, I hope that they would be able to move forward this historic agreement, which apparently took place there, namely to rid us of the anti-ballistic threat so that we can begin to commit ourselves and our resources to the programs that we need and feel that there is peace up the line for us. Um, the uh, Strategic Defense Initiative as a shield has been questioned as a, if, and its feasibility has been questioned by 50 Nobel laureates and 700 members of the National Academy of Sciences. In fact, in today's paper, people who are actually working on it are suggesting it has a lot of problems. Uh, Senator Nunn, who was a leading arms exponent in the, in, the, uh, in the Senate, has said, you know, one has to question that feasibility uh, of stopping seven to 8,000 missiles when there are hundreds of thousands of decoys and we don't even have the software or the computers to deal with it. And so I think that we've got to begin to negotiate seriously and not to allow a trillion or a three trillion dollar folly, as Tom Wicker said, to stand in the way of insisting that President Reagan and Senator Gorbachev and uh, uh, Secretary General Gorbachev get back to the table because the hope of the world peace and world programs and human programs that we need in the states, in our state, in our county, in our district is at stake. But Gabe, it, so you, the you, think the, you think the president was wrong? Is that I think there should have been some form of adjournment and uh, say, well, all right, we have this disagreement. We'll have to have another meeting to discuss it, another pre-summit meeting, and so on. And I think that to hold it up based upon uh, a, a limitation which is now not clear. It may be just that they want the shield to conform to the ABM treaty. Uh, it's not clear that they wanted us to do anything more than that. And I think that it was therefore a very serious break at a moment when there was progress you being made by both sides. think the president was sides. wrong in standing so firmly on that no, particular yeah, point? I do. I think there should have been more uh, flexibility. Uh, Congressman? I don't think so. If the program had so many problems, what are the Soviets afraid of? We're talking about basically a strategic defense initiative, a shield, well, one that I'll the president I'll himself the said would be to applied to both sides. Well, as we cannot, mm -hmm. we have seen over as the years, Ms. Abzug, that we cannot trust the Soviet Union. We made a grain deal with them this president, year. And do you know they reneged on the grain deal at the president last minute? Nixon said, they don't keep any agreement. As President Nixon said about defensive weapons, if two gladiators are fighting each other and one then gets a shield in addition to his sword, he has two weapons. He has his sword and then he has his shield uh, behind which he can conduct an offensive attack as he is defending himself. And the concern, I think, is, and this is a, a concern that one has to realize as a possibility, that we may be dealing with a defensive shield at this moment, which could be converted, as some scientists have suggested, into an offensive first strike weapon. And I think there's a lot of 
you know, suspicion on both sides, and we have to find an atmosphere in which to conduct negotiations, which 57% of right. the people want to see, which is an, ap a, 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 an atmosphere in which there has Dave, to be issue some understanding of this make, issue. We cannot make an agreement on their terms. This is the issue. And the president did absolutely the right thing. The Russians are used to getting agreements made on their terms, and they right away break them. When they can show Listen, us they can keep totally basic agreements with human rights, I'd be the first one to start trusting them. Right now, I think we need that safety net. I must say Why is this, it ridiculous? Because the fact is that what is apparent here is that there was agreement on both sides to try to curb the most serious threat to civilization, which is the nuclear arms race. Secondly, the agreements that were reached were also to reach the question of human rights in the Soviet Union. So that what was at stake is some of the things that the congressman or Joe was complaining about. They were also going to discuss the right of emigration of Jews, the right of dissidents. That also, I think, is lost and when you break off closed. an agreement. And also various regional agreements with doors. respect to Afghanistan yeah. you, and so on. You say so you I think that you lose in a precious opportunity. It is also clear that there is a mutually beneficial objective here, that we have verifiable, mutual cutbacks in arms which can really relieve us of the tremendous fears that we all have for destruction in the, of this civilization and the need that we have to build our nation, to build our district that we're both seeking what, to represent. One last comment, uh, Congressman. Well, I think Ms. Abzug's view of this is distorted. The precious opportunity to talk about human rights and all the things that she's referring to came about because we had the Strategic Defense Initiative. The Soviets know they're behind us at least 10 years in computer technology. Now, you know what they want us to do? Stop researching so they can catch up. And what are they going to do when they catch up? I mean, we have no cause to trust the Soviets at this point. We certainly want to make an agreement. I want to see every nuclear weapon uh, disarmed and gotten rid of. Well, I'm glad I think we have that. to do that. There's no question. But we can't do it on their terms. I don't think you should do it on terms of one nation or another, but on the mutual human terms. Nations and people have to bring about peace. These nuclear weapons can only bring about war. Right, and I also want to say very simply that there is no evidence whatsoever that there is a shield which can really change the picture. From the beginning of civilization to now, whether it was the bow and arrow or the gunpowder, none of those technological advances have brought about peace. We have to begin once and for all to realize Soviets that we have, have to bring peace. We SDI. don't have to love the Soviets. We don't have to care about them. We only have to care about okay. our own the people. Soviets have their own research program. They've already violated agreements. They have the major radar installa installation at Krasnowsk. I think that we've got to stick to what we've done. I think the president did a marvelous right, job. Let, let me ask you uh, a question, Congressman, about the elderly. But first, I want to ask you a question, uh, Ms. Abzig, about uh, marijuana. Uh, Congressman Diagardi uh, has charged that you introduced a bill 12 years ago for the legalization of marijuana. Did you do that, and do you re regret doing it? No, no such thing. Uh, you know, this is an interesting question that you ask. Uh, a member of Congress has to have a record of performance in terms of uh, legislative needs of the district, which Mr. Diaguati hasn't got uh, in, in any effective way. He also has to serve his constituents, which he hasn't, and he hasn't given any leadership. But most of all, he's been raising a question as to his credibility. These legislation that he's talking about is a bill introduced by Ed Koch, which several of us co-sponsored, which sought to deal with a very serious problem at the time. The problem was that there were laws which could put people who were using marijuana, marijuana for private purposes in jail up to 15 years. A lot of young children uh, were being arrested for using marijuana, which I always opposed. Uh, the legalization of which I have always opposed to this very day. Then putting them in jail with hardened criminals, uh, serving draconian terms, and also not really going after the drug pushers and those who are applying the trade. This was intended to decriminalize. In fact, by the time we introduced the last bill of the series that Mr. Diaguati has referred to, the law was begun to be changed so that it now in this state and in most states in the nation has a decriminalization in that there, it is a misdemeanor or a, a, a violation you to possess marijuana. You don't regret introducing that, that or no, co-sponsoring it. No, I think it was it. very crucial to help 
not put kids okay. away with hardened criminals. Con I think that that was a very important thing. This bill was supported by uh, Charles Rangel, who was head of the Narcotics uh, Committee that the congressman serves on, by Liz Holtzman and by others, because it was necessary to show that the law had to be changed. Congressman. Okay. Uh, let me repeat what Mario Cuomo said in 1977, I think it was, Bella. Bella, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, and you're good at it. Now, I brought the bills with me, Gabe. One bill is on decriminalization, three of them on legalization. Let me now read a couple of paragraphs from the bill. My turn, uh, Bella. Not only would this bill allow the possession in a public area of a marijuana, a marijuana in reasonable amounts, paragraph two of the bill says to distribute, transfer, or sell in a public or private place any marijuana. Uh, we're talking about the public sale in a public place for private use. Now, to go further, a reasonable amount, because we're talking about this, these poor kids, and I agree with this one joint. Uh, the last paragraph says that a reasonable amount is defined as three ounces. Now, uh, let me show you something here, Gabe, if I can get three ounces, pretty big. This is a three ounce bag of, or at least this is what a three ounce bag of marijuana would look like. It looked like, we've, we've weighed this very carefully. Now, what's in there? Parsley. Uh -huh. <laughs> The, the point is that we're hardly talking about kids being put in jail for smoking one joint. There's enough substance in this bag to intoxicate over 300 kids. This would have been the gateway to poisoning a whole generation of kids. So it's not the rhetoric of decriminalization. It's making it Joe, illegal. Joe, I have There's to no tell doubt. you that this is... I heard about this little trick of yours. And what this amounts to is baloney. I have here nope. a pound of baloney. Well, let's I mix heard it up. about It'll this. It tastes pretty okay. good. I'll tell you what, I'll take the parsley. No, we'll I'll do the here, cooking in my old tradition. I may need and this. I'll mix it up with the baloney, okay? But the point is. The fact is that this Dave, is just pure baloney. For the record, there now, are three I bills. just want to point okay. out to you right. that this is really a very slanderous statement. In fact, I worked very hard on the question of drugs. With Charlie Rangel, we went to the Golden Triangle to get rid of the supply. We worked to create drug enforcement. We worked the to create... The Golden Triangle being uh, Burma? Uh, 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 Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia during the war mm -hmm. to try to eliminate the supply, to provide for drug prevention programs, enforcement, uh, and so on. The uh, congressman has issued a statement that he knows, having worked no. with me and having Hello. supported this bill. This is the man at the head of the committee. Your yes. own chairman supported I, this bill. Running, Just a moment. Not but, me. I mean, the point you is are. that you is not that, the point. You I said wish that to make clear to you. Twisted your arm. Well, I, he must I have twisted it pretty anybody. hard. It must be black and blue because there are no. four bills here, no. not one. All right. First of all, I want to show that you don't know anything about the legislative process. The one bill is the same bill reintroduced with Three additional terms. sponsors. But it was to legalize, not to decriminalize. It was totally to, to decriminalize. The sale and in, in fact, public places in reasonable amounts for public kids, for private use. That all that meant kids was, could have bought it in uh, school yards. Okay, all well. that meant was that kids were Bella, passing marijuana towards said, each other, to each other. This was a well-known problem that existed at the time this bill was introduced. The fact is that you should know this, which I'm sure you do not, and that is that this bill was fashioned uh, on the uh, Marijuana Commission of President Nixon, who said, whose commission reported that there should be the decriminalization. Would you want to restore the provisions that existed then that kids who use the marijuana, which I oppose, and which kids in Westchester do, unfortunately, to my deep regret, would you want the restoration of a 15-year term in which kids could Hello. be... I want to ask the you to answer that question. The issue is to educate these ask, kids not to use it in I the agree. first place. I agree with you. But That's the issue but here, do you education. Want, do you want and to Gabe, restore those pointed laws? out the number one problem yeah. we have in Westchester well, County today. That question? It's drugs. There are vials of okay. crack you, all I, over our okay, street. All right. you I wonder how question? much crack she would allow use right. today. Well, that is a scurrilous statement. Well, well, I some of the ones have that opposed made. any legalization of any drug, These marijuana bills, included. You don't have to would be an you, attorney, Bella, would you to, answer to me? look at legalization. Would, I know, but that's what the commission provided. That's what the National Commission that Mr. Nixon set up provided. That's what, in fact, has become Bella. the law. Would you want to hey, restore the original record, law? My record on drugs is clear. Would you answer I that question? I have been involved okay. with the Phoenix House I'd as like a citizen for over 10 years.
Uh, Ms. Sazig came... has asked you a question. Would you want to restore the, the, the law with the, with the big penalties for possession of marijuana? For kids. Obviously not, but I want to obviously well, deal all. with the issue. She's so dealing with the symptoms. We've got to deal with the problem. The problem is educating okay. our kids not to use these substances, not to give them the gateway to poison. This would have poisoned the whole generation of kids. They would have been zombies. Okay. Can you imagine this laying around the house? It's bad enough we She's have alcohol. She's asked you a question. Do you want to ask her one? This is baloney. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask her one? You have the right to. I just show sure. you. Let, no, ask no, wait a minute. Ask about how I feel about drugs, Joe. Uh, uh, Bella, ask about no, the fact no. that I spent Would many you, years in the Congress. Wait a minute. Hang, hang on. Bella, you Hazard. haven't ask changed me that one question. bit. You haven't changed no. one bit. Oh, I mean, well, that's why people right. love me, because right. I Order, am the I think the issue here is that the policies of Greenwich Village and the early 60s are not the policies for Westchester County in the 1980s, and that is the heart of this race game. Okay, well, now, the well, interesting thing oh. about this issue, if I may answer another yeah. point, is that despite the fact that Joe, like a lot of other politicians, are now jumping on the anti-drug bandwagon, the fact is that there was wrong. a lot of silence for a long time That's in wrong. the Congress, and in fact, he voted against Treasury and appropriations and postal service appropriations, which would have provided money for drug okay. enforcement, my for customs my question? service, Absolutely. and the rest. I'll let you, and, I'll let you ask, I'll, not... Congressman, I'll let you ask your question after okay. we take a break. Okay. Uh, I started the program by saying I was going to ask you about your record on the elderly, uh, particularly uh, uh, Ms. Abzig's charge that you have displayed total ignorance and unconcern for them, and she singled out your vote against a bill that would have provided, as I understand it, cost of living adjustments for Social Security and for another that would have uh, reduced uh, appropriations for assisting housing. Well, what's your answer to that? Sheer nonsense, half-truths. I uh, got a letter from a Democrat, James Roosevelt, last year praising my stand on protecting the Social Security trust funds uh, on, on the COLAs. Uh, I was one of the first congressmen to get COLAs on... COLAs being cost, cost of living, of living increases, adjustments. right. One of the first uh, to get on the, the bill, I think it was Congressman Okar's bill, to give the COLAs to the senior citizens, uh, in spite of the, uh, the Graham-Rudman uh, bill. Uh, I have done everything I could to protect that money which is so needed for the senior citizens in their retiring years. And anyone who tries to distort that record is, is lying. And I've got a, a letter from James Roosevelt, the son of uh, FDR, uh, who represents, by the way, a Democratic organization, uh, which points that out. What about Let you, me Masaji? say that this is about the crass amount of uh, lying, the most crass part of his distortion. He got a 30% rating from the National Council of Senior a Citizens. A democratic organization. Which is an organization that re rates all members of Congress, Democrat and Republican. They're not for him, they're not for me. Now, but the most significant part of the distortion and the prevarication here is the fact that the organization he's referred to, James Roosevelt's organization, the National Committee to, Perverse, uh, to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, which he has sent out a letter from in a mailing to the district, has actually endorsed me. And I got a letter from him over the phone when I received this mailing, in which James Roosevelt said, we're pleased to give you the endorsement of the National Committee because throughout the time as a congresswoman, there was no member who was a stronger advocate. I received a 100% voting record on Social Security. He's now attempting to distort okay. my record, no in addition to which, James Roosevelt says, and I think you should hear this, there are some politicians who would like to try and get the electorate to believe all sorts of things. I cannot believe they would try and do that with you and your record on senior citizens. To, to this James is your Roosevelt, mailing in which he... you say I'm opposed to Social okay. Security. In the face right. of James Roosevelt's letter, in the face right. of the 100 percent of my three you have terms a, in the, Congress, the, the, yeah. the National clear. Council okay. of Senior Citizens. Uh, fella, Congressman. A courtesy, please. The, the point is clear. Mr. Roosevelt did not withdraw his letter to me. That letter came last year. That letter was sent voluntarily by him and his organization. It's sent to and lots of members of Congress. that letter praised my positions on Social right. Security. Okay? All right, now, now let's go to the question. My uh, question. You're entitled to a question the, to Ms. Abbott on, 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 any, on any matter. All right, but the major issue facing Westchester County today is drugs. Uh, New York City is the capital of crack, this highly potent okay. form What of question cocaine. do you have for Ms. Abzi? Well, the question I have is because I recently brought money for the, from the district, the DEA, the mm -hmm. Drug Enforcement Administration, to, play, to, to train 45 police officers in the county. And the question I have for Ms. Abzug is, why in 1974 did you vote against reorganization plan number two, which would have created the DEA? Everybody That's knows. That's the Drug Enforcement the Agency. The Drug Enforcement Agency. Right. Everybody knows that that was part of an overall reorganization plan 
in which they were shifting 900 employees from a customs service to immigration service, or out of immigration into customs. And it was a bill that was opposed by many in the Congress because of that reorganization. And it happens that if you knew the legislative process effectively, I read it carefully. we know that that was a reorganization bill. And 900 people were threatened about losing their jobs. And many members of Congress, therefore, voted against it to preserve those jobs. We all subsequently have been strong supporters, especially me, of the Drug Enforcement Administration. And I have supported all of their authorizations. In fact, on several occasions in the last session of Congress, uh, Joe, Joe voted against appropriations, which included Nonsense. appropriations for the Drug Enforcement Administration, for the Coast Guard, for the Customs Services, because he has been spending a Dude, lot of time in the Brett, Congress I can't not get meeting away with that. Yeah. I voted for the Drug Omnibus Bill, $2.1 billion. All right. Congressman, uh, say again. I'm sorry I didn't hear the beginning of that. I can't let her get away with that. I voted for the Drug Omnibus Bill, $2.1 billion, the one that just passed uh, and somewhat scaled down through the Senate version. So uh, that's totally out of that's context. That's not a appropriation. That was just totally a bill out of context. Okay. which is an omnibus anti-drug bill, which I support, by the way. Let's deal with some but other... But which actually uh, does not provide the money. Uh, Where the money is concerned, he is always found okay. wanting. You never put your bark where your bite is. I do, but I, I want to be sure that we don't put this country into more and more debt because our kids have got a legacy of debt. And that's why and you voted against programs show you up Gabe. and down the line. You know what this card is? This is the card that I use to vote to represent my constituency. Take a good hard look at it. This is the most expensive credit card in the world. This card has no limit. Congress applies money to programs with very little oversight. And what do we do? When you get a call from American Express Diners or whatever, you sit down with your spouse, you look at what you're doing, economic reality sets in, the limit's reached. Not with this card. We keep bumping the limit. We reach $2 trillion, and we just keep passing it on to the kids. This is I something that we've true. got to do. I have used I this think card responsibly. Yeah. But at the same time, I think you ought to know that he has voted against housing in the district, which gives him a zero rating from the National League of Cities, uh, against children's programs just for brought education, in senior citizens housing which, gave two weeks him, ago. which gave him a 10% rating with the Children's Defense Fund, against the environment, uh, uh, which right, gave him right, a 33% right, rating with the League of Conservation all Democrat Voters. Democrat organizations. And these are all nonpartisan organizations yes. which rate Democrats and Republicans equally. In fact, they rate some of your Republican well, members much higher than you. Okay, it's because you do not serve the needs of the district either in your no, voting or in your the, services. But the Congressional Quarterly, an independent publication, praised my constituent service and said even Democrats are you saying that Joe You have only one office. Brought. Everybody else has two and three offices. People the can't reach you. The issue is how you serve it's, the public, It's Bella. easier to get to, wa to Washington than to get to White okay. Plains I'm to centrally see located. Fine. We have about a minute and a half left. Uh, in about 40 seconds, Ms. Abza, can you ask the voters or tell the voters why you should be elected? Yes. I'm a person of experience with a legislative record of having brought in $6 billion of programs into New York State, many of which affected Westchester, programs in housing, programs in education, programs in water pollution, sewage treatment, harbor cleanup, commuter transportation. I'm a person who has stood up to fight for the people whose needs are being neglected. They are not now being represented in the tradition of Dick Ottinger, who has been a strong member of Congress, who has represented the district, both in legislation and constituent services. I and he had similar records. I think there's time now for leadership. There is no leadership uh, here, and there is no performance. Congressman? I'm proud of my record, Gabe. I've lived now in Westchester County for 29 years, and I've seen Westchester County grow from a bedroom community to one of the most impressive and economically stable regions uh, in the country. And I'm proud to say that it wasn't a government program that made Westchester County what it is today. It was the people. And that's why I left a career after 22 years in business to run for Congress, to see whether I can continue this as the greatest opportunity society the world has ever seen. And I've delivered for Westchester County. Two weeks ago, Mayor Noto and I, from Maranac, announced $4.3 million for senior citizens' housing. Just my very last vote was on H.R. 6. Congressman Ottinger for 10 years has been looking to get authorized a massive flood control bill. Guess what? Joe Diaguati got it yesterday, $58 right, right. million, dollars, and also for the Shell Drake River, uh, the East Chester Creek. Thank you, in Congressman. Alberta. I would have to object thank you, to Bella, that. Thank you, B Bella Abzug and Congressman Joseph Diaguati.
What is your reaction to the President's State of the Union address, and how do you feel about his proposed budget? The, uh, as usual, the, the President uh, made a very excellent uh, speech. I think the best part of the speech is that uh, he doesn't contemplate any new taxes, and neither do, do I. Uh, I think that we've got to keep the pressure on reducing the waste in government, and I think uh, any idea of tax increases will lessen the incentives to root out uh, that waste. So I think that's the best aspect of it. Uh, the part that I think is unrealistic as it pertains to the budget is a, a call for 8% uh, or an 8% increase in the uh, military budget. Uh, I don't believe that is realistic. I think that the Pentagon has to be treated the same as any other government agency, uh, and the Pentagon has to feel the same pressure as the, uh, the other parts of the government so that it continues to look at the waste within its own, uh, within its own agency. Well, which programs would you say are your priorities? My priorities would be uh, education on the one hand and the environment on the other. Uh, I don't see these as expense items or line items on a budget. I see these as an investment in our future, uh, perhaps the, the most important legacy uh, we can leave our children. When I talk about education, I'm obviously referring to student loans. Uh, I think that the student loan program can be improved. I think we've got to collect more of the money back to make it work as a revolving fund the way it was first intended. But I don't see throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I think that we need to strengthen the program but make it work better. Getting back to the defense budget, do you think the President's call for the 8 percent increase is in tune with Westchester's thinking? No, I don't. Uh, I think that uh, the citizens of Westchester uh, would uh, look at the priorities and say that uh, uh, we've got to deal with many of the, the problems facing uh, the elderly, the, the poor, and, and the others not uh, quite ready to help themselves uh, before we can give an 8 percent increase uh, to the Pentagon. Uh, I think that we've got to keep the pressure on the Pentagon uh, to, uh, to root out the waste. I believe in a strong defense. Uh, as do many of my constituents, but we don't believe in a spendthrift defense, and we've seen enough indications that there's still a lot of waste around. Well, in the final analysis, do you believe Graham Rudman was a good idea? Yes, I do. I think uh, Graham Rudman is going to uh, force Congress to set its priorities. Uh, I think it's the thing that we needed to get the attention of Congress. I did not see us uh, doing our job last summer when we tried to reduce a $230 billion budget uh, all we could come up with was $50 billion, down to $180. Uh, I now uh, see that the, uh, the uh, Comptroller General has revised those figures back to over $200 billion. Uh, so we've got a long way to go, and we must balance our books. Uh, rather than calling it Graham Rudman, I like to think of it as the Balanced Budget Act or the Deficit Reduction Act. And the reason we need to balance our books is most clear when you consider that by 1991, 41 cents of every dollar will be going to pay the interest on our national debt, and that is a terrible legacy to be leaving to our kids.